All right, so you want to get your speakers into subaligner, but you may not have a lot of experience with an audio analyzer. That's great. These videos are exactly for you. I'm going to show you how to do it um, in the most direct, sort of simple way possible. Now, if you do have experience with audio analyzers, please head over to Tracebook and use that platform. That is for you. But uh, if you don't, and you're never gonna use an audio analyzer after this, then it doesn't make sense for you to go to a lot of work. So I'm gonna try and give you a simplified setup. A lot of people's first question is, why can't I just do it for you? Well, I could if you are near Minneapolis, or I'd be happy to travel to you if you have a lot of speakers that would really be, you know, worth my time to measure over a few days and add them. But for most people who have, you know, four or five, just a handful of speakers, I'm making these videos so that you, anywhere in the world, can take your measurements and send them to me and I can get them in the app as quickly as possible. Um, but I'm also willing to get on Zoom with you and I think that's probably gonna be the end of this process for most people. So you'll go through these videos, you'll get your measurements set up, ready to go, and then when you actually go out and do your measurements in the field, I can meet you on Zoom to make sure that um, you don't have any problems, answer any questions, help you with challenges, things like that. Um, and then once all that work is done and I realize it is a lot of work and, uh, that may seem counterintuitive because you're like, well, I signed up for your app so that you could do the work for me. Well, unfortunately, a lot of this data is just not available publicly yet. And especially if you have custom speakers, right? Like you built the speakers, there's no way for me to add your custom speakers to the app. So we need to get this data. We need to do a little bit of work up here at front, but the good news is you only have to do it once. We'll get them into the app. And then as long as you keep using the same settings, uh, you never have to do it again. Okay. So what is the setup? Let me just give you an overview. That's all this video is about. And then um, in the next videos, you're going to set up your audio analyzer, set up Room EQ Wizard. Uh, you're going to we're going to practice that setup with a speaker at home and then we'll talk about going out into the field and, and doing a demo of that. So the overview is that we're basically going to do a ground plane measurement. Uh, what does that look like? Well, this is a series of videos that I did for Tracebook and I'm just going to play a little bit of this so you can see what the setup looks like. Nine times out of ten, you've got to go outside. I know that's tough for some people, especially if, you know, it's snowing outside right now where you are. Um, but I've tried a bunch of times to do it inside and every time I always have sort of worse results. So you can get outside away from all boundaries. Like this is actually too close. Um, there's a wall over here and it's actually too close. So ideally you want to be really far away from uh, any walls and a nice big parking lot works really well. How far do you need to be? Well, that kind of depends on the speaker, but you can imagine that if you need to be probably about three meters uh, away from the speaker to measure it, then multiply that by five and you get 15 meters. And that means that you want to be 15 meters away from any walls. So then that means you need a 30 meter room. Now that starts to get really big. Now that's a conservative estimate. Um, but you can just see why it's going to be a lot easier if you can uh, go outside to get these measurements. Alternatively, uh, if you can find maybe a local gymnasium where you could go and measure on a weekend or uh, maybe a really big church or something, that could work. But what you really need is a rigid floor. Um, measuring on grass sometimes has been a problem and uh, measuring like on anything hollow is a problem. Um, by the way, the reason I'm talking about all this stuff now instead of in later videos is because this is the thing you need to plan for ahead of time. So maybe you'll start looking around for where to do your measurements and then in a couple of weeks you'll actually go out and do them. And while you're waiting for that day to come, you can be uh, setting up your audio analyzer. So I want to give you an idea of, of the space that you need. So ideally, just a, a big parking lot, big cement slab, something like that. And if you can find a nice calm day with a low amount of wind, that is the ideal. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to see here, but I've got a microphone here on the ground, and then I've got the speaker just tilted down, pointing at the microphone. So we'll talk about exactly how to do that uh, in future videos. 
um, but you can use like a laser disto or you know just do your best to angle it down there but you're just going to put the mic on the ground and then connect that to your audio analyzer so i guess we should talk about the pieces that you'll need and I would love it if you don't buy anything. I would hate it if you bought something just for this project and then never used it again. So the three main things that you need are the software, uh, the audio interface, and the microphone. So the software is free, RumiQ Wizard, you can download it right now. Um, the audio interface is basically anything that you have or you could borrow from a friend. You need a two channel audio interface with two outputs and two inputs, that's the best. A lot of people try to use their consoles or something like that. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. But, you know, just try to keep it as simple as possible because you're going to come directly out of that audio interface and then directly into your system. So you don't need to measure every model of loudspeaker that you have, just one of each. So if you have loudspeaker models A, B, and C, then you need one of A, one of B, one of C, and then you need the entire system. So if you have a powered speaker, it's just that one speaker. If it's an amp and a speaker, you need that. If, But a lot of times for people, it's a, a processor, an amp and a speaker, or the processing is done in the amp. Either way, that's all you need. You don't want anything else in the system, no consoles, no effects or anything. You're gonna come out of your audio interface directly into the amp or processor and then into the speaker, and that's it. So you want to keep it nice and simple. We just want um, that one simple system. And then you're going to use, you know, the settings you would use on a show or manufacturer recommended settings um, and take a measurement, make sure that it looks okay. And that's pretty much it. So most of it is in the setup here, like figuring out where to measure, getting the audio analyzer set up, but then you just take the measurement, uh, once or twice to make sure you guys have good data and that's pretty much it. So by the way, I know questions are gonna come up for you. Please feel free to um, just put those in the comments below this video. We can keep the conversation going. I can make more videos to answer more questions and talk about people's special cases. But I should have started off this video by saying that you know this is for a lot of people like you that might not be using all of the speaker models that I have in Subliner already. So I have a lot of the top manufacturers models because I wanted to get the most common stuff, right? So I have a lot of Meyer Sound, L Acoustics, DMB, and I'll keep working through those to get you know the most common models. Um, but I've talked to a lot of people who are signing up for Subliner that uh, have either less common loudspeaker models or stuff that they've built themselves and they'd love to add and I'd love for you to be able to use it. So that's what these videos are all about. Okay, so we talked about that. We talked a little bit about the setup. Hopefully you have a little bit of an idea about that. And I'll just show you one other thing here real quick. Um, this is just a video of me trying to take some measurements indoors. And I just wanted to show you that even in this like fairly large room, it was problematic, right? There was more ripple than we wanted. There was, um, the floor had, was not maybe 100% rigid. So even if you have a room this big, um, try to go outside if possible. How do you get help? So comment on this video, send me an email, nathan at sounddesignlive.com. And um, on the on the next video is probably the last one in the series, this one here, I will put a link to schedule a call with me. So go ahead and watch all the videos and then when you get to the last one, uh, schedule a meeting with me, either if you wanna just chat about this and ask any questions, um, or if you want to actually schedule time so that I can show up while you're taking your measurements and help you walk through it. I'm happy to do that because the more high quality measurements that we can get into Subaligner, the better it will be for you and everybody else. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos and get these measurements. Um, and yeah, let me know what questions come up. Thanks.